Next event on the track is the 3,000 meter steeplechase. Henry Rono still has the collegiate record, also the meet record. And Stanley Cabene, who is in this final, has the best time in the country amongst collegians this year. But this is the man, Anthony Rotich, the senior from UTEP, going for the three-peat. Is he ever? He's got an amazing story. And let's take a look at what happened to him last year. It was Stanley Cabene. A fellow Kenyan from Arkansas that people felt was the favorite coming in, and it came down to the last 100 meters, and then disaster struck. Luckily, he wasn't injured, but Kevin A got too close to the hurdle. That sometimes happens in this event as you start to accelerate in almost a sprint for the finish. You're taking longer strides. You're looking to get over the barrier. And he went down, and it was all Rotic from there. He only step. knew Anthony a couple of weeks it. ago that he was one of only three people potentially to have that accolade of winning nine, three in a row. Five. Twice, Kabene has won at the SEC level, but he hasn't been able to beat Rotich here in this final. Well, you can bet your life, Dwight, that's been on his mind for a whole year. You know, no doubt feeling at that point I can outkick him. Maybe he could not, but nonetheless, you think that way. And you have plenty of run left. This is Ole Hesselberg. Uh, who is from Denmark, a physics major, about to graduate there, and um, his uh, his performances have just improved. They uh, from Eastern Kentucky, and he was actually found out uh, over there by uh, a whole series of people who connected him to Eastern Kentucky, and he was a nine-minute steeplechaser running for a club in his high school days. 12 finalists, only eight will score. Seven and a half laps of the track, 28 barriers, seven water jumps. They go by the water jump without taking it the first time. And we'll see if this turns tactical the way the 1500 meters did. Esselberg has one of the fastest times in the field. Uh, Stanley Kevin A is clearly the fastest, but there's a host of guys at eight minutes and 33 seconds including Coach Rick Erdman's charge, Hesselberg, from Eastern Kentucky. Rotich is, is an interesting story. He's back now off the pace. And Edward Kibichi from Louisville. There is uh, Rotich. You've got to get a clear vision as you approach the hurdle. When you're running in a bunch like that, you make sure that you can see the hurdle. You gauge it, and about five steps out, you know whether you're running at the right pattern to smoothly go over the hurdle, or whether you're a little too close and need to stutter step. Let me, while we have a minute, just touch on how everybody gets here to Oregon for the NCAA championships. The athletes are divided in the country in half, east and west, and 48 fastest performers in the east and the west go to a location for the regionals. And in every event, there are 48 athletes that qualify. They are winnowed down to 12 in each running event. And those are the athletes that are invited. The NCAA pays the way of the teams, and they come here to Oregon so that there are 24 athletes in running events that make up each of the events. And through a series of semifinal races, they winnow that group down. From the 100 meters to the 800, there's only eight. And in an event like this, there's 12. So Edwin Kibichi continuing to lead as he did in his semifinal. And Zach Sutton from Florida State. Stanley Kibene there in third. Anthony Rotich is now moving his way up. Now taking over from Kibene. So important to make certain that you have enough space to approach, clear, and land on the other side of the barrier so that you don't get hurt. And let me tell you, I'm sure, number one, those barriers don't move. And number two, they also get higher as you get longer into this race. Or a little bit of a problem into the water jump. It's a hot day, but I don't think you want to do that. And uh, I certainly had that history, too. <laughs> Let's take a look at what happens here. Most of the athletes will step on the barrier. And again, it's a practice routine. Wow, that was, a, that was a bad ball. That is angled out. You start at two feet, three and a half inches, right by the barrier. That's the depth of the water. And then it moves out 12 feet later to just dry land. Well, again, uh, they're circling the track. This has a wonderful history. Uh, it goes back to English times in the early 1800s when there were some races that were conducted 
up to three miles in length, and they often did them out in rural parts, and they would have a race from one town to the other. And uh, there are stories written about how they would kind of focus on the town steeple as the direction they were going. Sometimes the races were through wooded paths and over stone hedges. When in the 1860s, the sport of track and field got formalized, they included this event to kind of commemorate some cross-country runs. So lo and behold, the 3,000-meter steeplechase was born. Well, Rodich has moved up into second place. Happy to follow Edmund Kibichi's lead, the sophomore from Louisville. Seems to be very happy with that as he goes down. So Kibichi is going to uh, have to regroup. So let's take a look at that. Very dangerous event. Just a matter of taking your eye on that barrier for a moment or misjudging it. Here he comes up to He's too close. too close. I could see that right away. I didn't even know. I, had, I was looking away from the camera at that moment. But I could see from his position there, he didn't judge appropriately. And it wasn't like his vision was blocked. And everyone has to adjust around that. That could have been much worse. We, yeah. of course, hope that he's OK. He's back in the race, but back about 10th place. And now the champion, the two-time defending champion, takes over. And the man who wishes to dethrone him right behind him. Rotich is an interesting, interesting story, Dwight. Um, he actually, uh, while he was over in Kenya, never ran in high school did Anthony Rotich trying to win a third NCAA title. And he felt he had some ability, he got talking with a cousin of his, Wilson Boyd, who was the world record holder in this event, having dipped under eight, sec eight minutes uh, at one point in his career. And he said, I'd like to see if I have some ability. And to his credit, his coach watched him and said, I think you do, says Wilson Boyd. And if you work with me, let's see what happens. He got better and better and better, and we'll finish the story later. Three laps to go, and UTEP senior Anthony Rotich is seeking his third championship title here in Eugene and feels he's more ready than ever to capture. Coming to the Horicon, trying to win for the third time, I know it's a big challenge, especially to me. It's a hard day, but what my coach normally tells me and what I believe in is if you go there, be positive-minded, everything will work out the way it should be because the training that I've been having with my coach, my training mates, I think right now I'm even much more better than last year because right now I got a lot of endurance, I got a lot of speed. So what I only hoping to happen this week is the way I've been training, the way I produce in the track, and that's exactly what I'm hoping for. And then the rest, of course, it will come out. Yeah. Wilson Boyd, his coach, watched him for a year, saw how fit he was and what his talent was, picked up the phone and called Paul Herring, the coach at UTEP, who was an Olympic champion in 88 in the 800 meters, and they knew each other. And he said, this man has talent, trust me, he's good. And Herring offered him a scholarship, and look at what has, had, has happened. Well, Stanley Kebene has to hope that this time he can get in position and strike at the right time, not fall over the final barrier, and end Anthony Rochich's dream of the three-peat. It's only been done twice before. James Munyala, who also went to UTEP, and then Daniel Lincoln, the former American who went to Arkansas. Out a bit on the back Lap and a half remaining. Still a lot of people in this race. 71 seconds, Dwight, for that lap. It's not a full distance here because they have a water jump inside the actual 400 meters. However, the hurdles and everything else slow you down. The pace is very solid here. You don't have an exact estimate of what their finish time might be. But they're not fooling around out here. And I think over the last couple of laps, you're going to see surges go on here. It's already happening a little bit now. They're breaking up that lead pack. Coming up to the belt, it's Anthony Rochich with Stanley Kevin. He right on his shoulder. Ole, Ole Hesler there, right there behind him. Mike Hardy is also there. And now the real running begins. Rotich, Cabini, and Hesselbjerg. Watch how they approach the hurdle now. It's important Arkeen to Dindy judge it correctly at this point as you approach it. You don't want to lose momentum, which you can seriously do. Look at them go to the arms, and you can see Rotich trying to really pull Arkeen away here. Dindy. 
Well, Rotic and Kevin A now in a full sprint. They have two barriers remaining, a water jump and a barrier. And you can see him just going for it. Zach Zedden of Florida State was trying to make a move. Ola Hesseberry is going to get third unless somebody falls down. Rotic down the final stretch for the three-peat. Kevin A goes wide like he did last year. This time he makes the hurdle, and it's Kevin A. And it is Rotic. Can Rotic held him off? It looks like it's going to happen. And the three-peat has been accomplished. Eight minutes, 33.9 seconds. Excellent time. Stanley had flashbacks, I'm sure, all year long of this getting him, himself into this position and hoping he had the speed to overcome Rotic. And it was not to be by the narrowest of margins. <laughs> Let's watch. Both men carried their momentum perfectly over that hurdle. They lost nothing. Look at the strain in the face and the teeth showing. Right here, Stanley knew he couldn't catch him. So the civil engineering major from the University of Texas at El Paso with a 58.9 second last lap over barriers and a water jump winds up getting his third NCAA title at this event in a row. Wow. And that's the 10th title overall <laughs> for UTEP over the years. And his fourth NCAA title is he has an indoor mild title as well. And he's downstairs with Jill Montgomery. Dwight, thank you so much. Anthony, you didn't go out with the leaders in that race. How much of that was a strategy of what you wanted to do? Uh, my plan was not to go like really hard from the beginning. But I don't know what happened in the middle of the race. Then one of my friends fell down, so I did not have any options but to leave it. Undefeated, three-peat NCAA champion. What do you love about the steeplechase? This has been one of the hardest three races I've ever had. Uh, although I did not have any pressure, I was just trying to run real well from the beginning to the end. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, he had a huge target on his back. Anybody could pulled the upset and he held everybody off for his third consecutive title.